crocheted rows 1 through 70. Please make sure to follow the instructions for that video. You go to part 1 of this series. And now for part 2, I'm going to show you how to assemble the cowl and create the edging. So we're going to slip stitch both of these edges together. The last row, row 70 of the work, and the beginning chain. And so we're going to slip stitch both of those thicknesses together. And then after we do that, we'll do a really pretty and simple edging around the top edge and the lower edge. At this point, if you wanted to do this cowl a little bit differently, instead of make it a, making it a tubular cowl, you could twist one side like this and then you would be creating a Mobius twisted cowl. But for today's demonstration, I'm going to do it in the tubular, more simple uh, style. So we're just going to pick up our work and holding both thicknesses together. We'll just line up each chain from the beginning chain with each stitch from the last row of the uh, of row 70 and we're going to slip stitch them both together and uh, the way this is facing I think it'll be easier to do it this way with row 70 closest to me and the chain behind it so we'll start with a chain one so we can position ourselves to be working into that last stitch worked okay and so we're going to insert our crochet hook into the last stitch of row 70 and into the first chain of the beginning chain. And we'll just slip stitch to join them together. Like that. And we'll insert our crochet hook into the next stitch on row 70 and into the next chain on the beginning chain and slip stitch to join them both together. And you just want to be really patient and make sure that you don't skip any chains on the beginning chain and you don't skip any stitches on row 70 so that you get a nice even join across both thicknesses of the work. Okay, after I finish doing this across the entire row, I'll show you how to start the beautiful edging. I slip stitch to join row 70 and the beginning chain together, and you'll see that the um, this actually creates a bit of a ridge. If it bothers you, you could definitely make that the wrong side of the work and turn it around, and it looks a lot more invisible on the other side. So we'll turn our work around so that that seam is now on the inside, and we're ready to begin one side of the edging. Can you believe this entire piece has been made seamlessly so far? Uh, we're going to be able to do in the entire piece plus one side of the edging with one continuous piece of yarn because of the way we assembled it. Okay, so now to get started on the edging, we're going to chain one and single crochet in that same space. Chain four. And we're going to work a two treble cluster in that same stitch. Yarn over twice, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and now we'll pull through all three loops on our hook. We're going to skip across to the end of the row, two rows up and single crochet into that end of row. Okay, so what we're doing is working a beginner cluster stitch, but then because we alternate it with a single crochet, it turns that cluster on its side and creates a very simple scallop along that edge. Chain four. And we're going to work two treble cluster in that very same space. Yarn over twice, insert your hook in the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook, skip across two rows, and single crochet into the next end of row. And we now have our second uh, repeat of the edging complete. Chain four. We're going to work a two treble cluster in that same stitch, yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. I'm going to skip two ends of rows and single crochet into the next. So you see it might not even be precisely, uh, I think it might even be the third end of row, but what I want to make sure is that I'm not squishing this. It's about an inch tall when, I'll take that one back out so you can see, it's about an inch tall, so I want to make sure I work over an inch to give it enough space to lay flat. So you can kind of eyeball that as you go, but doesn't that create a really beautiful and simple finished edge to this otherwise just end of rows? I love this edging. It can be done on so many different types of projects. And because you don't have to be precise about where you put the single crochets, it ends up that you can really just adjust it as you go to make sure you're getting a nice smooth flat edge. You don't want to get them too close together uh, because they will pucker and, and uh, ruffle and if you don't get them too far apart you won't um, constrict the fabric that you're working it onto. So do a few more.
Okay, we're approaching the end of our round now, so you want to make sure that you're spacing properly to ease in the last few uh, repeats of the pattern. So I'm going to take a look now and see how much room I have. I think I have actually enough room for two perfectly. I'm going to do the next one single crochet into this spot here, and then I'll slip stitch into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join. So we'll slip stitch into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join, and we can now fasten off this side of the edging. And you see we've got the beautiful scallop edge now all along this side of the cowl, and this edge is still plain. Repeat edging on opposite side of cowl. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.